Potatoes are a staple food, and there are so many different ways to prepare them. We're going to show you the ultimate version of four classic preparations that you'll want to make over and over again. The first recipe we're going to start off with is roasted potatoes. The perfect roasted potato should be crispy on the outside and creamy on the inside. They're easy to make, but also really easy to get wrong. So let's go over a few tips to make the ultimate roasted potatoes. When making roasted potatoes, you want to pick a waxy potato, like a Dutch baby, red potato, or fingerling potato. Waxy potatoes have low starch and high moisture, which means they can hold their shape and are ideal for things like roasting, potato salads, and scalloped potatoes. On the other hand, starchy potatoes have high starch and low moisture, which yields a fluffier interior. It makes them ideal for frying and baking. A few potatoes, like Yukon Golds, are actually considered both waxy and starchy, so they're super versatile. One easy trick for roasted potatoes is to parboil them, instead of just roasting them all the way through. Add your potatoes to boil in water and let those boil for five to seven minutes. This step saves time, helps them cook more evenly, and even makes your potatoes crispier after roasting them. After that's done, you can either leave them whole or chop them. We're gonna quarter these so they're more bite-sized. You can get pretty creative with your seasoning, but we're gonna keep it classic and add olive oil, salt, pepper, and rosemary. Whatever you do, don't skimp on your seasonings. If you under-season these, they can be really bland. One crucial tip to know is to not overcrowd your pan. If your pan is overcrowded and your potatoes are too close together, the moisture will end up steaming them and your potatoes will be mushy. You want to roast these at 400 degrees for 35 to 45 minutes, depending on the size of your potatoes. Halfway through roasting, give your potatoes a stir to keep them from sticking to the pan and make sure they cook evenly. When these are done, they should be browned on the outside and fork tender on the inside. Roasted potatoes can seem kind of boring, but when they're done right, they're actually really delicious. Seriously, they can be even better than fries. Everyone has their favorite style of mashed potatoes. For this recipe, we wanted to create the ultimate creamy mashed potatoes. We're using Yukon Gold potatoes. They're harder to over mash and have a foolproof creamy texture. Something like a russet potato can get too gummy if they're over mashed. We're gonna peel the potatoes before boiling. Some people like leaving the skin on in their mashed potatoes, but for really creamy potatoes with a uniform texture, it's gonna work better with the skin off. Quick tip, to keep your potatoes from discoloring and oxidizing as they sit out, place them in a bowl of cold water while you work. After you've peeled the potatoes, cut them into one inch pieces. That way they'll cook more quickly. Then cover them with cold water and bring to a boil for about 12 minutes. While your potatoes are boiling, you want to add milk, cream, and garlic to a small pot and bring that to a simmer. That way the cream will still be warm when we add it to the potatoes later. Infusing the cream with garlic is optional, but adds a lot of really great flavor. Once it simmers, just make sure to strain that garlic out. For mashed potatoes, most people use a masher. Some people use a potato ricer for a more uniform texture. But if you don't have that, another trick to get a similar result is to use a fine mesh sieve. Push the potatoes through the sieve, making sure to scrape all the sides. It's a little extra effort, but you'll get much smoother potatoes than you would with a masher. Once you finish the step, you want to work quickly while the potatoes are still warm. Add in cold butter and stir until that melts into the potatoes. The butter will coat the potatoes so that they stay firm when we add the cream. Then, gradually add the infused cream. Once the potatoes are smooth, add your seasoning. Again, don't be shy. Potatoes are great, but they need a good amount of seasoning. And that's it. This recipe may seem really indulgent, but you need a lot of fat and flavor to get that classic mashed potato taste. Everyone knows how to make baked potato. To take them to the next level, we're gonna show you how to make a twice baked loaded potato. For these, you wanna use your standard russet potato because they're ideal for baking. First, brush these with oil, then prick the top of the potato with a fork. If you don't, there's a small chance it could explode in your oven. This also lets excess moisture escape so that the potatoes will be fluffier on the inside. Then, bake the potatoes at 400 degrees for an hour. Once that's done, we're gonna slice these in half and scoop out the insides. Just make sure you leave enough so that you still have a sturdy potato skin to hold the filling. We're gonna make a classic loaded potato by mixing this with sour cream, melted butter, salt, pepper, cheese, and scallions. Then we're gonna scoop that back into the potato skins and bake it for 10 minutes. Then, if you wanna get even more cheesy, top it with more cheese and let that melt in the oven for five minutes. 
these are best when served with a generous dollop of sour cream, some scallions, and crumbled bacon. Now that's how you take a baked potato to the next level. We've already talked about traditional french fries in our how to fry video. But if you want a healthier option that's also less messy and time consuming, here's a go-to baked sweet potato fry recipe. Let's peel our potatoes. If you like skin on fries, feel free to skip this step. This recipe works both ways. To cut these into that classic french fry shape, cut off the ends of your potato so your fries look more uniform. Then slice the potato in half. Put the flat side down to keep it more stable. Then cut half inch slices. After you've done that, you can cut the slices into two to three fries. The important thing here is to make sure that they're all a pretty uniform size. That way it'll cook evenly and you won't end up with any burnt fries. Pro tip, soak your fries in water for at least an hour. This will help draw out any excess starch which gives you crispier fries. It's worth taking the extra time to do this step because it really makes a difference with baked fries. After they're done soaking, make sure you pat them dry. Like really dry, desert dry. Seriously, any excess moisture is just gonna make your fries limp. Oof. Add your fries to a bowl and toss them with cornstarch. Make sure you fully coat them on all sides. This is gonna help make them extra crispy. Then we can start to add oil and season them. We're using grapeseed oil, but you can use another neutral oil, like canola or sunflower. Then we're going to add paprika for an extra kick, along with some garlic powder and pepper. It's really important that you skip the salt at this point. You want to add it after instead, because if you add it before baking, it can draw out the moisture and keep your fries from getting crispy. We'll add plenty later. With most baked recipes at Tasty, we use parchment paper. But from testing this recipe, using foil actually gives us crispier fries. You also want to make sure the foil is greased so you can easily remove and flip the fries. You want to keep these pretty spread out so that they crisp up and don't just steam and get mushy in the oven. We're going to bake these at 425 degrees for 15 minutes. Then give them a quick stir so that they cook evenly and bake for another 15 minutes. Make sure to keep an eye on these. And now is the time to add the salt. And again, don't be scared to be generous. You want to do this pretty soon after they come out of the oven to make sure that the salt sticks to the fries. And that's it. Let's be real, these are never going to be just like fried french fries. But you can still get pretty crispy baked fries if you follow these tips. Potatoes can seem like a boring side dish, but there's lots of ways you can transform them and add extra flavor. If you follow these tips, your potatoes can be next level good. Seriously, they may steal the show. Um, I mean, I would make those roasted potatoes right now, or I would just like swim in a bath of those creamy mashed potatoes. They were so good. <laughs> just bathe in them.